Uh, I already had a fruitful exchange of views with President Marcola on this work programme on the occasion of our annual meeting, and I'm looking forward to the debate with you today. Your expertise, especially when it comes to the territorial impact of EU initiatives, is invaluable for the Commission. The motto of our work programme this year is no time for business as usual, and these are not business as usual times. I understand you've just had a very long debate with uh, Dimitris Avramopoulos about what is arguably the biggest challenge our union has ever faced, uh, and I'm sure you have a lot to contribute to that. I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. In preparing this work program, the Commission has taken into account the views of the EU institutions and bodies, including those of the Committee of the Regions, expressed in your July resolution on priorities for 2016. I'm very pleased to note that the programme we have adopted reflects a great degree of convergence and our shared focus on the key challenges such as growth and jobs, migration and global stability. These challenges require working in close partnership with actors at all levels, national, regional and local. The support of the regions and local authorities is essential for fostering jobs and growth and for applying our common European rules on the ground. Let me highlight in particular the following areas. We will continue to focus on the implementation of the European Agenda on Security, which was adopted in April. Terrorist attacks in Paris have added a tremendous sense of urgency to work on implementing this agenda. Only a few days ago, the Commission adopted a proposal, well, yesterday actually, uh, a proposal for a directive on terrorism and an agreement on the passenger name record directive will hopefully be reached before the end of, the, of this year. Local and regional authorities are very important for the implementation of almost all the measures proposed in the Commission Working Programme uh, and the European uh, Agenda on Security, especially when it comes to prevention and de radicalization initiatives. Local uh, actors are in direct contact with those most at risk of radicalization. You see people on a daily basis and you can see how they develop, how they change and perhaps intervene at an early stage. That is what is needed. Everyone needs to be properly equipped to recognize the signs of radicalization and assess what intervention might be needed. And I strongly believe local and regional authorities should not be left alone with that. But of course, the tragedy of refugees coming to our European borders is a proof that not only European citizens are threatened by terrorism, but citizens worldwide. We will continue to prioritize the refugee and migration challenge. The European agenda on migration provides a comprehensive response. Our current migration system has proven to be insufficient for such numbers, and we need to fundamentally rethink the way we manage our common external border and strengthen the implementation of our common European asylum system. Our external border is not a Greek border, it's not a Bulgarian border, it's not a German border, it's, not, it's a European border. And we should take collective responsibility for that European border in close cooperation with the countries directly involved. We intend to set out measures on how to address most effectively the challenges posed by the migratory crisis on the 15th of December. So next week, we will present a border package proposing to strengthen the mandate of the Frontex Agency and to establish a European border and coast guard. We will ensure that in times of crisis, the EU will step in to support the frontline member states to better and more adequately address the challenges they face at our common external border. We have to keep our sights on creating jobs, growth and investment. The investment fund is now operational and is delivering high quality investments to further boost the European economy. We now will focus on improving the investment environment and deepening the single market so that it delivers better outcomes, fewer barriers, and the right environment for innovation, especially among SMEs and startups. We will present a range of concrete proposals to implement the digital single market strategy, such as a cross-border portability of online content services in the internal market, proposals on digital contract rights, and a review of the audiovisual media service directive. 
The, United, the European Union being a lead player in the Paris climate talks, we will follow up with three important packages under the Energy Union. We have presented on the, sec on the 2nd of December its, our comprehensive and ambitious circular economy strategy, which addresses the full life cycle of products. It includes revised legislative proposals on waste establishing, a clear and ambitious long-term vision for waste management and recycling underpinned by targets and tangible measures to address obstacles while taking account of different situations across member states. And here I have to stress, we could not have made this proposal without very active and intensive contacts with regional and local authorities. Waste is something that starts at the municipal level and without municipalities there is no way the Commission could make um, realistic and ambitious uh, proposals. We have worked differently on this strategy. It is the product of a genuine cross-sectoral effort. I led a project team consisting of Vice President Jirki Katainen, responsible for jobs, growth, investment and competitiveness, Commissioner Carmenu Vela, responsible for environment, maritime affairs and fisheries, and Commissioner Elzbieta Bienkowska, responsible for internal market, industry, entrepreneurship and SMEs. We also consulted extensively in preparation of the package. The outcome of the public stakeholder consultation demonstrated broad support to the circular economy, from citizens to businesses, NGOs, local and regional authorities, all contributors want to develop, of a, develop the circular economy model with more sustainable, repairable and more resource efficient products, which do not become waste so quickly as they do now. Sixteen chambers of national parliaments have endorsed a joint initiative to call on the Commission to adopt a strategic approach on tackling the issue of food waste. We want to make 2016 a year of real social progress. We will present a new skills agenda. It will aim at promoting skills development and at promoting vocational training and higher education. It will also aim at reaping the full potential of digital jobs. Investing in human capital helps avoiding skills shortages. We will set out a legislative and non-legislative action to give a new start to work-life balance for parents, including supporting women in the workplace. We will use the recent withdrawal, uh, withdrawal of the Maternity Leave Directive as a new start to address the challenges facing working parents and carers today. On the 2nd of December, the Commission has also adopted a proposal for a European Accessibility Act which aims at enhancing accessibility for disabled people in key areas such as transport and ICT. And all of us in this room know that this will affect uh, local and regional authorities more than anybody else. The labor mobility proposals under preparation will help people use the opportunities of free movement whilst addressing abuses in the benefit system and social dumping. Free movement should not be a threat to social protection. Furthermore, 2016 European semester will put a stronger focus on the economic and fiscal situation and on member states' employment and social performance. This will be complemented by the development of a European pillar of social rights which will modernize and address the gaps in existing, le in existing legislation and identify common principles and reference benchmarks built on national practice, best practices with a view to upwards convergence of employment and social performance over time. We will have an uh, orientation debate about that soon. We will look into the EU Occupational uh, uh, Safety and Health, ACI, to see uh, whether it needs to be updated and how we will do that. We will um, press further on taxation. Uh, we will follow up on trade uh, and on the Five Presidents report. We need to update the multi-annual financial framework to make it fit uh, for purpose. We will continue on better regulation. I hope we will get um, an agreement with uh, Council and Parliament uh, uh, on this. Um, and uh, on better regulation, I want to insist on a few points. I very much count on uh, your committee to support us on better regulation, and I'm encouraged by your commitment to territorial impact assessment. I am pleased that there is a close cooperation with us in this regard. And as chair of the REFIT platform, I'm very happy to welcome uh, the Committee of Regions uh, as member of the REFIT platform. 
and I welcome the nomination of uh, Mr. Francois de Coster. He's an experienced hand as the committee's representative to uh, the platform. I think this will really increase our performance. This platform is designed to look into burdens on the ground as they result from the implementation of EU rules as well as looking into the rules themselves. The contribution of the committee can be particularly valuable given its close relationship with stakeholders and the administration of the law on the ground. I really want the committee to play a leading role to ensure the right design and combination. We want things to be fit for purpose. The committee can help to create the agenda of the platform by identifying key areas where simpler, less burdensome requirements could provide more efficient results. I would really value your contribution, which, but that's entirely up to you, could perhaps take the form of an outlook opinion in the course of next year. The Commission would highly value that if you could do that. These are plenty of possibilities we can use, and I'm very much looking forward to working on all of this with you. And please, um, I'm looking, I really look forward to your questions today. Thank you very much, Mr. President.